Hi, in this lecture, I'm going to go ahead and begin with the next chapter, which is going to talk about money, interest, and income. The aim of this lecture is to one, derive the IS curve. First of all, actually, to go ahead and define what the IS curve is before deriving the IS curve. Second, derive the LM curve. And third, complete this analysis to finally go ahead and derive the AD curve. So we want to go ahead and do these things as part of this lecture. The IS curve, LM curve and the AD curve. Now, let us try and deep dive into it. So first of all, we want to talk about money. In my previous lecture, you know, I have always been focused on finding the equilibrium level of income. And how did we really do that? Well, I had a 45 degree line and I had an AD curve. And wherever the two were meeting, I was saying this is the equilibrium level of income that I'm attaining. And this is the equilibrium level of aggregate demand. In the background, though I mentioned that aggregate demand is equal to C plus I plus G plus NX. And we had always assumed that I is kind of a, you know, an exogenous factor something that is determined outside the model. So this I was always taken as autonomous. In this lecture though, I'm going to go ahead and change this uh, assumption that we made about investment. And I'm going to say that investment is not autonomous, not exogenous, but it is being determined within the model. by interest rate. So we'll slowly bring that into picture, but to begin with, we want to understand what is money. Now, you know, we have a complete full-fledged chapter on money also, but for now, you know, we understand that anything that helps us to exchange goods and services is called money. Now, money plays a central role in understanding what will be the equilibrium level of income and what will be the equilibrium level of employment. Always remember that interest rate actually go ahead and affect the level of investment. Till now, we were taking investment as exogenous we were taking investment as fixed, but investment is not actually fixed. But investment is a function of the interest rates that exist in my economy. Investment is actually going to be a negative function of the interest rate. See, for investment, I need money. To get this money, I'm going to go to the bank. The bank is going to give me a loan. This loan will come with certain interest rate. As the interest rate will increase, the loan will become expensive. If the loan will become expensive, investment will become expensive. I will not want to invest enough. So I can go ahead and say that investment actually is determined by the current interest rate in the economy. Now, you know, this is one aspect to it. This is actually, in a way, the demand of money. I am demanding money for different uses. I can demand money for consumption. I can demand money for investment, etc. But somebody has to supply money, right? So the central bank controls the supply of money. It is the central bank that determines how much money would be, you know, printed in the economy. And once this money is supplied, I'm going to always assume this as an exogenous factor. I'm going to assume this is not determined inside my model and this is a fixed value. So once you tell me that this is the number of notes that I've printed, I will just make a line through that level that this is the money supply irrespective of whatever happens to interest rate or anything else in the economy. Because money supply is controlled by central bank and the central bank is going to 
supply always a fixed amount of printed notes. So the stock of money, the interest rate and the central bank were absent from the model development in the last chapter. We didn't talk about any of this in the previous chapter. Now in this chapter, I'm going to introduce the following. I'm going to introduce the concept of money. I'm going to introduce what is demand of money, what is supply of money. I'm going to introduce the concept of monetary policy. Till the last chapter, I was always doing fiscal policy. I was increasing the government expenditure. I was changing the amount of taxes. I was going ahead and changing the amount of transfers. But this chapter is going to be more concerned about changing the monetary policies, bringing some changes in the money demand and money supply. It builds an explicit framework of analysis within which to study interaction of goods market and asset market. So now, till now, whenever we drew this diagram, this was a diagram where we talked about the goods market. We will re-explore the goods market also. But now I want to kind of combine the asset market. And by the asset market, I mean that I want to go ahead and combine the demand and supply of money to it. And then from here, from the goods and the money market, I want to kind of come to one final equilibrium. And I want to derive something which is known as the aggregate demand curve. So I will tell you this and we, as we go ahead, but actually we have two aspects to deriving the AD curve. See, to begin with, we drew AD versus Y. But this was drawn in this space. It was drawn in ADY space. This AD was actually not talking about prices at all. This AD was the simple equation that AD is equal to C plus I plus G plus NX. And we did not talk about money market at all. Now what I want to do is I want to kind of bring interest rates as a picture of this AD and I want to kind of see what happens to investment when interest rate changes and from here I want to derive the equilibrium of the goods market. I will make this figure at the end maybe also and this will help me derive something which is known as the IS curve. Then I want to go ahead and I talk about I want to talk about the money market, which we haven't even touched upon. So I want to talk about what is demand of money, what is supply of money, and I want to talk about the equilibrium here. This equilibrium that you are going to achieve from here will be called my asset market equilibrium. After we do this, I'm going to combine the IS and the LM curve. This will give rise to the LM curve, by the way. So I will combine the IS and the LM curve and I'll give you another AD curve. But now this AD curve will be in my PY space. This will have prices also. Okay. So my final aim is to reach here. And I'm going to do this in multiple steps. Okay, so this is about the introduction. I want to understand what is the goods market? What is the asset market? How to determine equilibrium interest rate that exists in the market? And how does interest rate affect the business cycle? So let's go ahead to this diagram and let's try and see what this diagram is all about. So this diagram actually goes ahead and it shows what was the interest rate on the treasury bills. Now the treasury bills are usually issued by the government and the aim of the treasury bills is to kind of go ahead and 
raise funds directly from the public. So the government goes ahead, issues treasury bills to the public and raises funds from those treasury bills. Now, what has been seen is that when the interest rate is, let's say, 5%, then, so first of all, let's just understand this thing. Supposedly, you give a loan of $100 to the government and the interest is 5%, then after one year, you will get this 5 into 100 by 100, $5 from the government, and you'd also get back these hundred dollars. Now let's look at this figure. Looking at this figure, we understand that the treasury bill interest rates have touched a very, very high levels, approximately a level of, approximately a level of some 16% interest rate and have dipped to very low levels also to an interest rate of some 3% or 2.5%. And we've also seen that they're dipping even low here. They're giving almost very less interest rate. Now, what has been seen is that we know that we had uh, one of the very, you know, big recession in 2008. So the question is, are high just before a recession? Are the interest rate high just before recession? If yes, then why? Do they drop during the recession? If yes, then why? And then do they rise during the recovery? If yes, then why? See, just before recession, when people start getting a hint that you know, things are not going to go ahead and work in their direction. A lot of times the government has to also raise money from the public. The government requires people to invest in safe funds. During the recession, the treasury bills interest rate drops because there is not much demand of the treasury bills. Nobody's coming ahead and buying those treasury bills. Also because of the flow of the money, the government is not able to give you high interest rate on the treasury bills. During recovery, the government again wants your income to kind of boost up, the economy to boost up. The government comes ahead and the government starts taking loan from you. And those higher loans actually mean that there would be high interest rate that the government would be offering on the treasury bills. So we'll analyze the complete money market in a little while, but this is just the starting of the money market. Now, you know, to go ahead, we want to kind of understand uh, another diagram. And this diagram is the GDP growth versus the real money growth. Now, you know, this diagram shows that there is a strong relationship between money and output. GDP is nothing but the output of the economy. How output grows and how money grows are closely related. We will go ahead and link them. We will go from the money market to interest to output. We'll do that. We'll talk about the IS and LM curve. But this figure just shows me that they are closely related to each other. Now, the question is, are they negatively related to each other or positively related to each other? Is it the case that when one is at, at its low, the other is also low? One is at its high, the other is also high? Or is it the case that when one is at, at its low, the other is at its high? So we have to also kind of try and identify what is the relationship between money growth and GDP. Again, something that I intend to do as part of this chapter. Once I understand, I teach you the ISLM model. So we will talk about how Y is related to M very shortly. Okay.
so we'll talk about m versus y and how they are related this is also something that we want to do now finally before we begin the chapter officially i want to talk about this see this is where we were as part of chapter 3 we just talked about income and spending that was the name of the chapter now we are going to deep dive and we are going to go into the asset market the asset market has two aspects to it one is known as the money market and other is known as the bonds market in each of the market whether i talk about the money market or bonds market an equilibrium is attained where demand is equal to supply or demand is equal to supply here well we will show this in the upcoming lectures that we want to aim at getting equilibrium in any one of the market if i have equilibrium in the money market this automatically kind of uh, takes care of equilibrium in the bonds market so you will notice that whenever we derive the final ad curve and derive the equilibrium interest rates we will only be dealing with the money market and in the background we will keep talking about the bonds market also we want to talk about the goods market the goods market is where we have already done some part of it in the ady space but till now we were keeping the investment as autonomous but now we will remove this assumption and we will actually have investment as a function of interest rate now whenever we talk about any changes that the government brings in the asset market whether it is in the money market or bonds market it is known as monetary policy whenever the government brings any change in the equation of ad that is a changes government expenditure taxes transfers then all of this are part of the fiscal policy of the government now from the asset market you will observe that i will derive interest rate and then at this interest rate i will derive the equilibrium of the goods market so please look at the arrows properly i will derive the equilibrium interest rate from the asset market and then at that equilibrium interest rate i will derive what happens in the goods market okay 